Today, AMD heralded the arrival of Big Navi in the RX 6800, RX 6800 XT, and the RX 6900 XT GPUs. I think this is the most competitive back-to-back -back GPU offerings have been, and all this corporate one-upmanship is fantastic news for the consumer. So whether it's Team Green or Team Red for the win, I wanted to take a step back, take a quick few minutes to share my thoughts on what this last release means for the SFF enthusiast. Welcome back to Machines and More. I hope you've all had a chance to take a look at the specs on the Big Navi announcement, and wow, these are some serious specs. And if they do live up to their claim, I think on a pure performance basis, there are going to be some tough choices to be made, especially with the 3080 versus the 6800 XT. Some might call these first world problems, and fair enough. We know that these are great products, and I've been mulling a lot on why these last quality releases are so significant for SFF. For starters, the sheer amount of power packed into one GPU really means that most of us can safely do whatever it is that we need to do with just one GPU. There are the really high-end use cases, but the truth is you've got something like two linearly scale 2070s in one two-slot package here uh, with the 3080. That's all around great news for the world of SFF because it means that builders can reasonably do all they need to do with just a mini ITX board like this and one PCIe slot. So it's a really good time to be Cooler Masters NR200 because not only does SFF have a path to the mainstream, it's now also got a performance justification to exist in the mainstream. So it's a win-win time for SFF, whether you're Team Green or Team Red. For most people, the GPU is going to be the center of your PC building budget. And whether it's a gaming focused rig or a content creator's work machine, it rightly deserves its seat at the head of the table. Now I get it, the RX 6800 looks great. It's flashy, it's capable, color scheme is really nice. Uh, memory specs are a little bit different, but at the end of the day, these two GPUs should be comparable. Basically, the specs look like they're trading blows with the 3080s, and even their own benchmarks seem to suggest that. The big omission, of course, is DLSS-like capability, if that matters for you. Now, with all these new launches, stock is going to be tight, and just like the Ampere launch was one of the most ridiculous ones, make no mistake, RDNA 2 is probably going to be just as tight on stock, and only, I guess, now, it's precedented demand, right? Now, outside of taking whatever you can get between your two choices here, I think SFF builders do need to be conscious of one very important thing outside of pure performance. This factor is the fit within your build. With the Headliner 6800 XT also pushing 300 plus watts, and this RTX 3080 pushing 325, every single GPU in this lineup is going to push the limits of SFF. Um, therefore, your choice is ever more important when it comes to these cases. The latest and greatest GPU is going to be a headache if you can't cool it effectively, and that's just making your case into a hot box, and no fun. Airflow direction and heatsink designs are key to this debate. Now, if you look at the 6800 XT reference model, it's a triple fan heatsink design, according to AMD's site, is two and a half slots. And really, it looks a lot like the Turing Founders Edition card heatsinks from NVIDIA, only with three fans and slightly thicker. The 5700 and 5700 XT reference designs were blower card designs, so even though they ran a little bit loud, at least the thermal impact to the rest of the case was minimal. For Big Navi, the heat fins run perpendicular to the length of the card, so it's going to exhaust on, on the sides of the case, similar to most high-end AIB cards today. Now, I reckon AIB's designs are gonna be more or less the same layout, perhaps with some monster heat sink designs like we've seen for the 3080s. Assuming you're not planning on water cooling the card on the custom loop, then my expectation is that this design just won't be as good in a case uh, with bottom to top airflow compared to the 3080 Founders Edition card. It's just gonna have a harder time exhausting its own air out the sides, especially if you're using something like this uh, solid panel. For NR200 or NCASE M1 users, it's gonna be slim fans for the 6800 XT. For these cases or any case where you can mount a top exhaust over this top exhaust fan, like on the 3080 Founders Edition, I would highly recommend trying this card out. And not only can you get tw full 25 millimeter fans on the bottom, 
this cooler is just one of the greatest designs I've ever seen on any GPU. And I just, I'm absolutely floored by how effective and innovative it is. You get the best of both worlds, isolated exhaust out the IO end and effective GPU thermals from the open air side uh, cooler. With the help of bottom fans, in general, this card performs at very comfortable thermal levels and you can choose CPU cooling that is relatively unaffected by the cooler design. Unfortunately, the 6800 XT is just nothing new in terms of cooling. I just think Nvidia's design here is smart and it really works. Now, for a sandwich layout case, this 3080 FE card is going to be hampered by the same cooler design that makes it work so well in a bottom to top airflow case. And the 6800 XT type of layout can actually work quite well. There aren't any true two slot 3080 AIBs anyway. The fan induced airflow in sandwich style cases will allow air to flow through the cooler very effectively and will help the card work a lot better even uh, than even in open air. Uh, going with a 6800 XT will be a very sensible choice for a sandwich layout case since compatibility with card height should be okay as long as you can fit two and a half slots in your case. Now if you're vertically mounting your GPU such as in the NR200 I think you'll also have a good time with a 6800 XT reference card too. As for the 3070 versus 6800, this one really comes down to pricing for me before you even get to the cooler designs. The 3070 is $80 cheaper, draws less power, and even though we didn't get an actual comparison from AMD, not that those cherry-picked non-ray tracing numbers are meaningful anyway, the cards appear to be evenly matched also. And in the same logic, the cooler designs will work for some cases and not so well for others. The 6800 does have the benefit of being a two-slot design. So uh, fan compatibility will be a lot better than the 6800 XT. There is one exception though. And if you are a video editor or content creator, the extra VRAM for the 6800 versus the 3070 may be an attractive value proposition for you with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 versus eight gigs on the 3070. But it's also kind of in that weird spot too since it's priced so close to the 6800 XT that you might as well just go for the extra compute units and higher clock speeds. Now, lastly, 6900 XT, yeah, for sure. If you're gunning for the 3090, this looks like a solid alternative despite the cooler design differences. And because let's not forget, it's spec at 50 watts less than the 3090 and it's also significantly less expensive. If you need this much GPU, this one totally blows the 3090 away in my opinion. And I'm sure it'll have a solid plan around its thermals anyway. Anyhow, in the coming weeks, I hope to check out at least a few of these GPUs in the NR200, NK M1, and similar SFF cases to give some objective recommendations if they make their way around here for testing. So please subscribe to the channel to get the latest updates and good luck to all of you if you're trying for a 3070 tomorrow. Just make sure you have rage mode enabled for best performance, okay?